Welcome to the Confidence Conversation, hosted by Michelle Beatty. The Confidence Conversation is a series of rich dialogues and insights shared by a variety of professionals in different industries as they unpack their secrets to being confident while sharing the building blocks, career wisdom, and their entrepreneurial journeys. The Confidence Conversation is an expansion of the blog CareerTipper.com. Hello, and welcome back to the Confidence Conversation. I'm your host, Michelle Beatty, creator of CareerTipper.com. Episode 9 of the Confidence Conversation features Linda Nieves-Powell. Linda is a broadly accomplished writer, director, producer, and photographer with an impressive portfolio built from vast experience growing a production startup into a million-dollar company. She confidently portrays a forward-thinking leadership style and unparalleled talent for inspiring and leading individuals and teams to meet and exceed business targets. Linda is a member of the Writers Guild of America East and SAG Signatory Producer. In 2014, her short film, Stereotypically Me, won an Honorable Merit Award at the Best Short Competition. Linda also partnered with Orgulosa, a Procter & Gamble social media brand for Latinas by Latinas, to write and direct the Nueve Latina monologues. Linda's groundbreaking, award-winning play, Yo Soy Latina, has been performed on Off-Broadway, regional theater, and at over 400 colleges across the United States. She is also the author of the novel Freestyle, published by Simon & Schuster in 2008. Her script, Six of Me, was a finalist at the 2013 Sundance Screenwriters Lab. Linda is going to share the dynamics of her journey that made her confident and pioneering an empowering movement of creating a sought-after voice that represents the Latina experience through art. Linda, welcome to the Confidence Conversation. Hi, Michelle. Thank you so much for inviting me on your show. I'm excited. Me too. Linda, I'm very grateful for you agreeing to be a part of the Confidence Conversation. I find your work to be energizing to any professional artist that wants to vocalize their thoughts while courageously sharing an authentic perspective of their community and culture. To my understanding, your writing path was fortified after you watched an interview featuring John Legazamo. Please share more about that moment of awakening for you. Well... It was 1993. I was in a horrible five-year relationship that I had ended. Um, And I decided that I wanted to do something and just go to the theater by myself, which is so weird when you decide to do these things because you never know what's going to happen. And I wound up going, I heard about John Leguizamo, and I decided to go see his play Spicorama, where he was playing a variety of different Latino characters on stage, Um, not all stereotypical, very varied. And I had never seen that before. And it was at that very moment that I said, oh, my God, this is what I want to do, which is really strange. Because, you know, I dabbled in writing never seriously before that, you know, poems here and there. But for some reason, it was as if I got on a train that day and it was it just took that path. And that was it. There was no stopping after that. So. Why these things? And I wasn't looking for it. It's just amazing. If I guess if you open yourself up as soon, and I do find that when you do a mind shift, I guess it was the ending of a of a of a uh, the relationship that took me on another path. Something happens, and you just have to allow yourself to go on that trip. (laughs) But yeah, that's how it happened. So you yielded to the experience, to the moment. Love it. It, it, it was a moment because I didn't plan it. Somebody else, something happened. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Your confidence in knowing that your monologue showcased Latinas from a social, cultural, and professional aspect sparked a movement of celebrating and honoring their varying experiences. Experiences that all women from different cultures and economic backgrounds can relate to in one way or another. How do you view your pioneer efforts as a part of your personal legacy? You know, my writing Yo Soy Latina was therapy for me. And so um, I didn't realize I needed to say that. And in saying that, I sort of freed myself. And when you free yourself, you free many people when when you risk that. So 
without that piece, I wouldn't be here now. I, I wouldn't have anything to talk about. <laughs> but it was uh, something that changed my life completely. Um, it gave me the confidence to speak out. It, it sort of also um, takes away the, some mysteries about the business. You know, because when you look at the entertainment business, it's like, oh, my God, it's so far reaching. How do you get there? The minute you start doing, you start realizing, oh, OK. So, so that, you know, there's still a little magic, but you can see behind the curtain, you know. Yes. And um, it's helped me really sit down and take risks in my work. So... I remember sitting and I saw your play years ago. I had to be in my early 20s when I saw your play. Positively impacted as another woman of color, watching your play, it took away, It no, I would say it more so reinforced the truth that we are, are all just the same. We're all living our life. And I remember um, one scene in particular, a young, one of the, um, one of the, Oh my gosh, the actress, she was talking about she met this guy and she was trying to tell her mom about oh, that's the character I played. Really? I, I played it in that in the in in that show, but it's uh yeah, Migdalia was her name and she was pregnant and she was gonna marry this black man, right? Yes. And they were like, you know, what is he like? Like Denzel Washington and that whole aspect and because really that's almost any parent like any mom or any daughter calling to tell their parents, okay, what does he do? What is he about? Like, is he a man of status? Like, tell me more. And the emotion that was conveyed in that scene and um, just other things, just the camaraderie of the, of understanding each other. Like for us, it's soul food for you. You know, people think, you know, rice and beans. And it's like, really, it's no different. It's us. Like, don't insult our music. Don't insult us. And it's not even insult. It's just embrace. You know, and I love, and I remember that that was years ago. And I remember that from your play. It's not like amazing. It is. And I, and I appreciate that so much because right now we're going through a major, um, I don't know what you want to call it, but this, uh, this, this awakening about race. I think we're more vocal about it. Um, and race has a lot to do with culture for me too. I think it's that if you're not the dominant culture, then you're other. And I've always had this problem, and this is where my anger and my passion come from. Why would I need to feel other? And why are you, you know, why do you get a chance to feel more comfortable? I don't, I never understood that. And so I'm always um, tackling that in the work. So it's never ending. It doesn't. It's uh, it's 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 just as re- relevant today as it was when I did it. You know, we talked about it years ago. I simply view it as brave. Just brave. Some might feel like it's what they ought to do, but I feel like when you step in your stilettos and you boldly show up and you respectfully. And I think that's the difference with your work and why I feel it's so sought after and you have brands that work with you is because you respectfully reiterate culture in a positive light and you touch upon every sensitive subject in a respectful manner that makes people comfortable to sit in the room and engage in the conversation. That's Thank you. I think, I think humor can help do that. It's amazing. Like, I know just watching your stuff and just getting reacquainted with you from, you know, before I watched the videos and I was laughing. You have great talent that definitely gets your message across. And I think it's amazing. Thank you. Linda, what are a few ways that you remain current and relevant to your craft? Um, I try to keep up with trends. I mean, uh, one thing I love about Stephen King, I don't know where he wrote this. It could have been in the writing. Um, he wrote this great book on with um, where he gave writing advice. But I, he stays very current with music, um, pop culture in general. He stays very current. I, I find that very cool thing to do. And I think for writers, we should be stay current so the trends are the internet the web uh, the web series you know i try to keep up with that i study it 
you know, and um, I keep writing. I'll try different things. The one thing I'm not great at is poetry. <laughs> and I love poetry, but um, it's not my thing. I love dialogue. Um, I love crafting um, structure and stories. But, um, yeah, that's what I do. I continue to do that. Also, when I use the camera, which is a, it's a new thing for me in the last couple of years, I never realized that the still photography part of that, because I was using it as video. Right. But when I stopped and really looked at what I was doing with the still photography, I said, wait a minute, there's something going on there that is more natural for me than the video part of it. Um, but that's part of storytelling. And so that I feel that everything that you love to do is part of this bigger, it's part of an arc. It's, it's just your... Um, Sooner or later, it's going to create some this beautiful thing at the end of it, you know. And you keep grabbing onto new things, and you learn new things. But yeah, I think um, that's how I keep try to keep relevant anyway. Fantastic, fantastic. If I had to describe your body of work with one word, I would say genuine. How has your genuine body of work attracted a variety of brands to work with you? Um. Well, thank you for that. Um, I, I, I would love for all my work to feel authentic to everyone. Um, and I strive for that. Uh, I became known for a short time there as the Latina empowering person, you know, and news traveled fast and word of mouth got out and it would just built on that. And I, I met a woman, um, who was a, um, uh, press, what do you call it? Publicity agent. She's a publicity agent. And she was coming to my shows constantly. And she said, if you need any help, you let me know. I was like, wow, that's awesome. And she really helped me w- with getting some ink and papers and some interviews. Ten years later, she comes back into my life. And she says, what are you doing? Because I'm working with this brand. It's part of Procter & Gamble. And that's why relationships are so important in this business. Um... But she remembered me, she stuck by me, she believed in me, and she pitched the idea of doing a series of monologues in the way that Yo Soy Latina was for Orgullosa, the brand, which is an online brand for Latinas. And we did an entire play. Um, It was awesome. I got to cast, I got to write, direct, and cast. And then the night of the event, I wound up meeting all these great celebrities. and it was just a beautiful night of women empowerment. They loved it. They loved the play. It was very similar to Yo Soy Latina in some ways. That is superb. <laughs> that is yeah. superb. It was a beautiful moment. It, it sort of, it, it, for me, it, on a personal level, it ended in a beautiful way what I had started. Because now I felt like I said it. It's documented now it's really time to move on. That's how I feel. And you moved on to which platform next? I'm trying to find other ways of talking about culture and race. And it's funny because I just saw the season finale of uh, Key and Peele. And I, I read this wonderful piece about how Chappelle at a certain point had to stop it. Key and Peele had to stop. Because now I, under, I truly understand why you have to stop stop it's heavy and it requires a tremendous amount of skill to deal with those heavy issues in that in that humorous way it's like you're carrying an entire community with you you're carrying an entire history with you you gotta lay it down for a second so i'm trying to find other ways to feature latinas broaden it a little bit more too as well In my stories, you know, not to say that I'm going to have the magic that I had with YSL again, Yo Soy Latina, but I'm risking again, trying to find a new way of talking about this experience. 
I think that's fantastic insight that you just shared. And I appreciate you being vulnerable and sharing that because I know that some of my listeners are artists, they're writers, they're, they have their own web series, they're pitching plays and TV shows and things of that nature. And I think it's great for them to be able to hear your voice and your experience. And it might be what they say, calm in the midst of a storm, maybe help bring perspective, maybe get them to sit back, take a breath. It's okay regroup, come back because this too is a chapter and it will have an end and it will bring, and it will bring a new beginning. You have to have faith that that's exactly how it works. It's a, it's a roller coaster ride. It isn't, you're not going to get, do one thing. And then you never want to do the one thing. That's the one thing you do. And it goes away. You want to build on the idea or whatever intention you have. You want to, Get the chance of continually talking about it in different ways. So that means you have to evolve. That means you have to step away from your old self and create this new identity because you can't get attached. And this is honestly, I'm going to be real here. It was a moment in 2010 and I was created the ultimate Latina theater festival. So it was this coming together of all these different voices at this festival. I did it for two years. And at that point I was starting to resent anything Latina because it was becoming too much me. I felt imprisoned by it. I felt God almighty. I have to step away and you're driving me crazy. I, if the one thing I loved was the thing I despised and I never wanted that to happen. And, and so it took years for me to step away and understand why I was feeling that way. I became a martyr and you don't want to become a martyr. You want to help the cause. You want to move. You want to be part of the movement, but you don't want to sacrifice yourself in a way that you lose yourself. And a lot of art. And I think a lot of artists of color can get caught up in that because you, you know, for us, we, we have this um, thing that we have to carry on. You know, we teach, we have to explain ourselves. We have to show where we've come from, what other people have done to us, how they take away opportunity, what we go through every day, just being that, that, that other person. Um, so it's, uh, it was something I had to get real with. And I have to say that I'm over the hump on that too. See, you're going to have, if you play this game long enough, if you're in the game long enough, you're going to have all those little mountains and valleys that you're going to go through and you just have to have faith that you're going to come out of it. So your transition to get you through that transition was just keeping your faith in order or was it pick something else up? It, it, my, it was my camera. I picked up the camera and I started focusing on still photography, which brought a, another type of love for the image. Um, Write something else. Go in a different direction. Try something completely the opposite. Um, Whatever that means. You know, fail. Risk failing at something else. Take up cooking. Create, you know, I had to move away. And in moving away, I realized what I was really, really, really good at and what I thought I could only do. You know, I had a perception you become the, the idea, you know, what happens is you're, you lose your identity and the wonderful thing that you create sometimes because it's so big. You know, I, there was, I don't know if you remember the Partridge family, but it was a show on television. And uh, David Cassidy hated the person, uh, the, char- the character so much, he completely had to kill it. Because it wasn't him. He wanted to be seen as a real musician. And here it is, is this character. So this is what I'm talking about. You have to be, you have to know that when that happens, you're going to go through this period and it's okay. You're killing this old identity and you're sort of moving on. You have to evolve. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. That is so profound. That is profound. That is, that's simply profound. So where do you go to stir up your creative juices and be inspired? Oh, everywhere. I mean, 
I love movies. I love TV. I love the internet and these YouTube videos. I love covers by these ordinary people. That sounds amazing. I'm inspired by a lot of things. Um, I love photography. I love talking to people. Even in just talking to people, you just like you inspired me today. You know, um, it's not every day that that happens. So, Thank yeah, I, I, I just, I have fun, you know, and I listen and I watch. As a writer, I'm constantly observing and trying to see where the story is. So you're on the lookout. You're paying attention <laughs> at any given time. Like, okay. And you got to be careful. With, 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 you know, when I'm around my friends, I'm like, oh, my God. And they're writers, too. I'm like, oh, my God, that line is amazing. Or, you know. Linda, I read an assignment and Schuster article about you that the person in history you most identified with is Harriet Tubman. Please share why. Oh, well, here is a, a woman, a slave among slaves, who decided she had a vision. And it, it, it feels like what I went through with Yo Soy Latina and that here I am, a Latina, feeling the way you guys feel. But for some reason, there was a light. I could see a light. I could see a tunnel, literally a tunnel. And it's and um, I'm looking for a way out where we can feel free. And it's, it's just so parallel, you know, in so many ways. I mean, what she did was truly m more amazing than ever. But um, she had a dream. She had a vision. And she how amazing is that? that that one person among all those people decided this is what I'm going to do for my people, you know? So yeah, I see that part of it. I see, I feel that there's a connection there. Oh, inspiring, very inspiring. How do you confidently determine the dynamics of your personal inner circle? <laughs> that is, whew, let me tell you something about that. Because I can go on for days about that. That inner circle thing. I, I, I could write a blog about that. I could write a book about it. You know, I've always had a hard time with that. I don't know why. You know, I was, I was bullied when I was 12 years old. I, mean, I always blame it on the, on the bullying uh, experience. <sighs> there are people that are just beautiful souls. And you know it right away. And those are the ones that will stick around. But in the meantime, especially in this business, you will meet many people, opportunists, that smile, that hang with you, that say all the right things. And then one day, there's this thing that happens where you feel that you were just a, a, a stepping stone for them. And at the height of your Sir Latina, I saw that a lot, actually. And during that time, I was telling you about the 2010 period. That's when I was even feeling it even more. Because I'm like, whoa, I'm feeling so used. I'm feeling so... People are just trying to uh, get experience and move. And, and, and that's fine. You, you, uh, but there's a way to do that and there's a way not to do it. So when it comes to my inner circle, I'm very, very, very picky. I'm very picky. I don't share a lot. I don't have too many people coming to my house. <laughs> you know, very few. And they know who the, the, the special ones know that they're special, you know, because they spend real quality time with me. Mm -hmm. um, the bad inner circle I happen to have are also artists and we share each other's work and we, sh we share, you know, uh, we give each other advice. Um, it takes time. You can't, I find for me now, I can't just open myself up and go, oh, I want to be friends with everybody. I want to share. No, now I know how it works. I was very naive in the beginning. Maybe that was, that's what, what I should have said first. I was very naive thinking that everybody would be as open and, and, and generous as I was in the beginning. And then I kind of went back into my shell. And now I'm back out again because I realized what that is. It's not me. I call that the tame the trust. You're learning to tame the trust. You're not so free to give it. And then, yeah, it's taming the trust. I think every 
I think every entrepreneur goes to that experience and definitely every trailblazer. Yeah. I think that's what makes some people so successful too. It's the ability to navigate that, that, that space dealing with people, how to deal with people. And I found that very difficult for my, for me anyway, I found it difficult when I find somebody I really, really like it works, but there's so many people that I question, you know, it's just part of my Virgo thing, I guess. <laughs> I have no idea. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Linda, you have an assorted body of work as a writer, producer, director, and photographer. Is there one facet of your work that resonates with you more than others? Uh, it changes constantly, but I would say the, mo- the what I feel that I'm really, my, the strongest skill set I have is the writing. And so I'm always sticking with that. Um, I find that the still photography is something new and I see something there that comes naturally to me. Mm -hmm. um, And I'm working on that. The direction and the producing part of it, I've become a really good producer. And anybody could be a good producer if you're a mom or even if you're not a mom. If you you can organize things well, you're a great producer. Um, If you can get people excited about something and to come on board, you're a great producer. As far as directing goes, it's something that I did um, that I continually try to learn to be better at. Um, but I did it because I needed to do it to get out what I was writing. So I learned it along the way. You enjoy photography. What motivates you in being confident in capturing amazing portraits and lifestyle shots? Um, I find the good in people. I'm a good seeker. Mm. And that, and, and I tell you, that saved me. The photography saved me because I was going into this dark place about humanity and it saved me. And so when I take pictures, I naturally see the beauty in everyone. And there's an elegant beauty that I see. And it's a classic, elegant beauty that I see in everyone that I take a photo of. That's a surprise to me. That was a beautiful gift that suddenly the camera became this new way of looking at things. And it sort of renewed my, my, my belief in, 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 in things. And, you know, it took me out of the dark space, which I'm very grateful for. Well, that's a blessing. It is. It truly is. That's why you got to keep looking and trying. You never know what it is. It'll got to keep moving you in that direction. Oh, I love that. Linda, what is the root of your intuition? Um, what do you mean by that? Um, I mean, my intuition is this raw, I mean, I'm not sure about the root of it, but my intuition for me is the thing that has led me all, uh, 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 has led me this entire time. What it is that leads that intuition, I have no idea. It's very organic for me. Uh, maybe it's emotional. Maybe it's um, something that happened way in my childhood that is dry is a driving force. But I don't know what it is to be honest with you. I just know that my intuition tells me. I'm I'm very clear about it. I try not to use this. I try to use that feeling. Does that answer that question? It does. When I see your work, you you're bold with getting your voice out there. And I know that you may know that, but I, you know, sometimes it's like you're bold and you're like, I'm just being who I am. But to some other people, they're like, no, that's bold, but you do it so tactfully. And I think that's what is amazing. So I feel like somewhere in there, your intuition guides you. So like, what's the root of that for you to be able to be so bossy with getting your message out there but at the same time like you said it's elegant it's tactful and for me I think respect of respect respectfully making your voice what is that saying they say you get more with honey than vinegar Vinegar. you have a you have an essence to that you have you have something there's something to that with your work that's interesting you said that beautifully oh thank you um because think about it. You went to 400, 400 universities. And that means there's not, you know, that's a lot of different audiences. Black, white, black, everything. Everybody. Right. Yes. So 
I don't know. Maybe I need to come up with a different question for that one. No, but- I think. No, no, no. I, I understand where you're coming from now. I totally understand. And it's one of those things that I think other people watching me would better uh, answer than myself. Because it's if I pay too much attention to that, I may not be doing it. It's one of those things that you're doing, um, how you say? Bossy. Without thinking. Right. <laughs> without thinking. Because it is a part of me. I am a big mouth, naturally. You know, like, I'm not afraid to talk about anything i'm always that person that i feel in my community and maybe maybe not now there's a lot more people talking but during that time when that place started you didn't hear a whole lot of people talking about that nobody wanted to talk first of all they didn't want to talk about race in our community they didn't want to talk about diversity they didn't want to talk about by being bicultural because in the you know if you didn't speak spanish you were not considered latina so I said, uh-uh, these are my rules. This is who I am. You're not going to tell me. And I put that out, and who knew, who knew that a lot of people were going to feel that same way? So it's almost being naive. I, there's a part of me that's very naive and that I believe in fairy tales sometimes. Even though I've become extremely cynical and sarcastic, there's a part of me that still believes that might be my upbringing. But that was excellent. I love the way you put everything. I want to cut a thing. I think it was beautiful. Um, <laughs> I, I, I just think that that's a thing that I wouldn't be able to answer well because I try not to think about it. I'm just doing. I'm just doing. I, I just appreciate your work. Like when I was thinking about who did I want to interview next for the confidence conversation, I I wanted to make sure that I had, I wanted to this time represent the arts because I, my whole focus of the confidence conversation is to focus on different professionals in different industries. And I had not had a professional from the art platform beyond the podcast yet. And you constantly came to mind and I was like, I need to like figure this out. Like, where is she now? What is she doing? And I was, I just love that you continued on, you know, that, it was empowering. It's what you're doing is empowering. And I think what really sealed it that you, you were, it wasn't about the money when you started, but you attracted it with your authenticity of yeah. what you do. And you're doing the same. See, that's the way it works. You doing it, you creating an authentic space for yourself creates this response. It's a generosity thing. And somebody else is going to come along and do it for you. That was the beauty of Yo Soy Latina, that I saw the magic in that. You know, Dr. Wayne Dwyer, um, may he rest in peace, he used to talk about that a lot. Um, and I, I have so many of his books. And that it, it's, the, you, it's really about giving. And you'd be surprised the amount that you get back. We're talking years later. Yes. You know, sometimes I get out of the clip. As a matter of fact, just six months ago, somebody out of the blue contacts me from years ago. I'm talking 10 years ago. and says, I have a friend who's looking to write a pilot episode for TV. We want you to come on board as part of the circle. And I'm like, wow, Yo Soy Latina did that. It's constantly bringing There was so much love in that project that it's constantly giving it back to me. So I appreciate that. I appreciate you doing this and keeping that word going. <laughs> Indeed. And I appreciate what you just shared, you know, poured it back into me as just encouragement. So Linda, I appreciate you joining the confidence conversation. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to end this episode of the confidence conversation with this affirmation. I am truly the author of my future. I confidently overstep fear and doubt to live out my wildest dreams that will usher me to living a lifestyle that brings me joy. Linda, please share how listeners can get in touch with you. Well, I have a website, www.lindanieverspowell.com. Yeah, that's the easiest way. And lindanieverspowell at gmail.com is my email. Awesome. And you can find me, Michelle Beatty, at careertipper.com and on Instagram at careertipper. Listeners, thank you for joining us today. 
Thank you for tuning in to this episode of The Confidence Conversation. We are grateful for our listeners and guests. For more career confidence motivation, resources, and to share your comments and feedback about this episode and share future guest suggestions, visit careertipper.com. Until next time, be career confident.